Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dalrin, and in today's video we'll be doing more updates for Shadowlands, particularly with one of the biggest nerfs the Blizzard announced from one of the harder bosses of Castle Nathria. This one's going to be particularly good if you still haven't defeated Mythic Denathrius. We also have a pretty massive story skip for any of your alts looking and dreading to do Corthia. If you're someone like me who has a billion characters, Corthia is going to start out very heavy on the story stuff. Very similar to the Maw introduction, a lot of us wanted a skip for that too, and a massive story skip is getting added for patch 9.1 for all of your alts. We also got quite a lot of Corthia updates. It's something that's not really making its way into the blue posts or updates from Blizzard, but Corthia is looking a lot more lively. So we're going to take a look at all these updates in today's video. First of all, the big boss change to Daddy Donnie himself, Denathrius, finally saw a nerf and this is a really good one it's actually quite a massive nerf for any of you guys still progressing through the fight especially those of you struggling with the part two and part three of the fight mostly in the part three however it's really difficult to nerf some of the fights in castle nathria because blizzard i feel like kind of backed themselves into a corner with the way they designed it normally when blizzard nerfs fights they nerf the health of bosses which is usually enough to make the fights far easier However, with Castle Nathria having so many bosses and their health bar tied to mechanics, when the boss hits X amount of health, Y mechanic happens, when the boss hits another number of health, another mechanic happens, and too often, nerfing the actual health of bosses and adds can cause a lot of issues. In particular with Castle Nathria, every time they've done this, you actually change the timings for fights, which force players to relearn how to do the fights, and after you've done the fight in a specific way, 300 pulls, 400 pulls it's very much muscle memory at that point and then it, certain nerves just don't feel like nerves they really feel like you're having to figure out another way to do the fight so blizzard made a perfect nerf in my opinion for castle nathria denathrius in terms of the mythic they actually added a little bit of extra leeway before he transitions between part two of the fight into part three Danny is kind of just going to stand there, let you wail on him for 15 extra seconds and transition into P3 with lower percentage of health, which means the phase 3 and the single target damage required to kill the boss will be much lower. If any of you guys have not even started doing the Denathrius, this isn't going to help you. But all you guilds out there, all you guys that are still grinding at Mythic Denathrius and are seeing phase 3 constantly, now with this change, you're most likely going to get him on your next kill. So big ups and good luck to any of you that are going to be attempting him with this change. We also got a pretty massive story skip for the actual patch 9.1 PTR that's currently testable and doable right now. There's a lot of story elements in this expansion. In fact, for over the last few expansions, we've had a lot of story things tied to some of the regular things we as characters need, whether it is bar powers or maybe certain upgrades or things like the legendary cloak from BFA. You kind of have to do these story stuff before you unlock integral systems or integral items in order to progress your character in terms of gearing. It's very difficult to just kind of jump in and start doing dungeons. You have to do all these other story stuff and doing them once on the character is actually quite enjoyable. Doing them like eight times on all your alts, miserable. It ruins the whole story stuff. It ruins the excitement for it. You end up going from liking these cinematics and liking the story to hating it because you heard it eight times in a row and it makes catching up on alts a lot harder. So Blizzard added quite a significant story skip for Corthia, which will be a zone you will want to unlock as soon as possible because there's going to be some of the integral systems in Corthia you will need in order to progress. Massive skip for first three major events. Just to let you know how big this skip is, I played through the story quests and they're quite long. And I was playing them slowly, kind of enjoying everything, checking out the cinematics, somewhat reading the quests, just going through them normally. Like as if it's the first time I've ever done them, not trying to speedrun. And if you are someone who's going fairly slowly, enjoying the cinematics, enjoying the experience, it would have normally taken you anywhere between 40 minutes to what it feels like an hour. Imagine doing that on four or six or eight or 10 different characters. It's a good step into story heavy intros and openings and Blizzard can definitely do this for a couple other features like the Maw skip when you first dive into Shadowlands. I feel like we've all done it so many times, they might as well add a skip for that as well. They've also added skips for some of the 9.0 stuff like unlocking Torghast and finding out what's happening with Anduin. There's quite a lot of skips for us to get through. If you're someone who never played the expansion, you're still going to have to play through the story. But if you're someone who's done it multiple times and you're trying to get another character up and running, you are going to be 
able to skip through quite significant amounts of it, which is good because you'll be able to get towards the end game goodness, unlocking the Corthia stuff, everything that has to offer, diving into dungeons and raids and PvPing as soon as possible. Finally, we have Corthia. This zone has been getting quite a bit of updates, even though it's not regularly updated in Blue Post or on Wowhead, but this place is continuing to evolve day by day. Week by week, this place is looking a little bit more lively. At first, Corthia was kind of empty. There wasn't really a lot going on. There wasn't a lot to do. Now it's kind of full of rares. It's kind of a small-ish zone, so it's not like rares are scattered every few feet from one another. But there's a hell of a lot more rares than where it started in and a lot of these rares i'm guessing are tied to mounts or maybe certain cosmetics or toys because there's quite a lot of events all over the place you also have a ton more treasures that you may be able to find not like again scattered everywhere but there's a lot more of them they're more often seen more noticeable and those treasures even seem to offer catch-ups for example from one of the treasures i got a catch-up to be able to get some of my conduits to item level 226 potentially could be great for any of our old characters you're just doing your maw stuff or corthia stuff you're trying to get some of the new currency in order to upgrade your gear but a couple treasures to upgrade your conduits is never a bad thing the new stigia also have gotten through a bit of change it's going to be called like knowledge or research inside of corthia and it has a very similar feel to artifact power of legion it even i tried it out and it has when you turn it in the new research it has the same graphic as when you turn in the artifact power back in legion you can find specific items like uh, lost relics or fragments of relics very similar to how ap back in legion worked and you turn it in for a very similar graphic of popping up for extra research added i wonder if that's going to play any kind of significance in terms of the usability of this new system there's also a lot more events in Corthia. They're not exactly explicit, like a marker on the map with a big star that says, hey, there's this big rare, go kill it. Or, hey, there's this event happening, collect X amount of these to help out in the event, or anything like that. These are kind of like hidden, random events that may happen in the Corthia camp, the place you'll be hanging out in, the main hub, or may happen out in the open world. The little activities for you to do or certain hidden elites and rares that normally don't show up on the map unless some specific goal has been achieved. Like if there's a powerful enemy but you can't interact with it unless you get a specific item and bring it to a specific place and then now you can fight him and when you defeat him he offers you a bunch of relics and potentially toys and catch-up gear and stuff that just doesn't really show up on the map that much and I really like that about Shadowlands. Some of the interactables they have. They're more puzzle based. Something you really have to figure out. They're not just kind of given to you and spoon fed to you which i like and hopefully we'll see more of that not really in your face stuff in corthia also another thing i noticed and this is coming from a rogue who is geared to the teeth from castle nathra mythic gear i felt like the this time running around corthia mobs hit a little bit harder harder than i'm used to and i'm wondering if there's some kind of scaling that's happening because i used to be able to pull half the map and then aoe down on my owl rogue now pulling two or three mobs is actually kind of hurting me and I'm wondering if that's what they're trying to do with Corthia as well. They saw this similarly back in BFA when they added Najatar. And to sell the whole system of, hey, these Nagas really don't want you here. It's supposed to be a new dangerous place. They'll really make those Nagas hit really hard. So I wonder if that's the same thing they're trying to sell with Corthia. I mean, the Maw, I feel like none of us really struggle with the Maw. None of the rares are really all that difficult. But I wonder with Corthia now, what it would be like for a brand new player coming in with no gear whatsoever. How would that experience affect them? And I think it'll be kind of interesting to, I guess, give players just a little bit of a challenge here and there. I think a lot of people enjoyed kind of how deadly it felt to play through Najatar. It wasn't fun dying to mechanics, as some people definitely did die to some of the rare, some of the regular enemies there. But a lot of people liked the fact that the mobs actually were kind of a challenge. And it made player be a little bit more on their toes in terms of approaching the rares, approaching the mobs, having to group up with other players, really seeking help from others until eventually we were able to outgear the content. We got some heroic gear from the new raid and then it started to feel a little bit easier, but it was an interesting experience nonetheless. Anyway, thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Let me know everything we talked about in this one. Which part was your favorite? What do you think about Corthia? How do you like the story skips and what other story skips and other uh, event skips should Blizzard add in the game? And are you going to be trying to down Denathrius on Mythic before patch 9.1, whenever that's going to be coming out? Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I do hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see all of you in another one.